Hello, my fellow explorers of human geography. I'm Jared Diamond, the greatest mind of our century. Today we will be discussing the intriguing subculture of otaku. We are pioneers and trailblazers. We fight for freedom. We transform our dreams into the truth. Our struggles will become a nation. In Japanese, otaku is a word for someone's house or family. Over time, the meaning has evolved to mean someone who stays home focusing on something. Although that something could technically be anything, such as Legos, otaku is typically associated with the celebration of manga, a popular Japanese style of art. The internet has helped spread the otaku subculture around the world, ignoring geographic barriers. In fact, there are now large anime audiences in many countries, especially Brazil, Korea, Taiwan, Germany, Italy, Canada, and the United States. There are even people who label themselves as of the otaku culture in your own high school. In this community, the otaku subculture is usually found near the middle and high schools since anime particularly appeals to young adults in this area. Now let's discuss language. The otakus typically speak their home country's language, but a bit of Japanese is sprinkled in here and there within the subculture. For instance, let's take a look at some vocabulary. When people think of an otaku, they normally think of the uh, terms or Japanese words um, kawaii, which means cute, sugoi, like awesome, neko, cat. This kind of depends on which anime in particular. Like, if I'm talking more, say, Soul Eater, like, the leader of the group would be the Meisters, while their friend would be the Weapon. For Owen High School Host Club, there is the Honey, there is the Mori, there is the Senpai, Kohai. It's different depends. A Weeboo is someone who tries too hard to be an anime fan. They try to overanalyze everything to the point where they see no flaws in what they're doing. As you can see, the otakus must have a basic understanding of a few Japanese words in order to enjoy anime. Now let's discuss dressing and appearance. Normally they would have some sort of um, anime sort of shirt, or if you happen to catch them at like Halloween and they're at school and whatnot, they'll do something called cosplay, which is basically they dress up as their favorite character from a um, TV show, anime, manga. They dress up and they, at times, act like that character. Do you find that a lot of people who watch anime wear generally like black clothes or dyed hair or anything like that? Uh, there are some people who do that, there are some people who don't. Most people who are otakus are kind of more in kept about it. They don't really want to just like blurt it out to everyone because, you know, you get made fun of. Therefore, the only special types of dress you would typically see with otakus is anime t-shirts or cosplay. Let's move on to rites of passage, shall we? Is there any particular manga or anime that you would consider like the essential for someone who like, considers himself an otaku? I would say they probably have to at least watch or read the big three, otherwise known as Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Now, I think we would all like to see some artifacts. Are there, are there any like particular artifacts? So, uh, different types of books, some cosplay material, like a sword or anything like Is there anything like that? Uh, my phone case actually has chibi or uh, like little uh, miniaturized, simpler, little what you would call cuter versions of characters from a anime called Attack on Titan or Shingeki no Kyojin. So I have that. Um, I have shirts. I have a lot of shirts. <laughs> I have posters. I have almost the entire collection of Degrayman and manga. Uh, I have a little bit of Bleach, a little bit of Death Note. 
I have the complete set of Attack on Titan. Uh, I have little uh, figurines or action figures. Other things like necklaces, bracelets. I wish I brought my hat now because I, I actually have a hat that says Otaku on it. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Are there any like particular, I don't know, fandom websites or something you use on a regular basis? Um, Tumblr, DeviantArt, definitely. There's a really big community there. How about some mint effects? When you're with like a group of others, do you hold expectations with each other? No. Okay. Everyone's different, and that's just how it is. Can you think of like any common beliefs or values you would have with another person who's really into manga? It's not a cartoon. It's not. Cartoons okay. are for kids. Okay. You go and show a kid Attack on Titan, and they will be traumatized. And lastly, we have some socio facts. When you're like a group of otakus, is there like something that makes one of you like better than the other? Or um, make you more impressed of a person maybe? Um, someone who's experienced more in, I would say, creating. Otakus aren't normally like really discriminative over people. Uh, if you're like new to the whole manga and anime sort of thing, they will like guide you through kind of like different shows and different books and kind of like give you recommendations and that sort of thing. There's really no being like, really prejudiced or biased or that sort of thing. What would you do if you wanted to marry through love or really, really impress another that's all the time we have for tonight. Please join us next week for my analysis of the cultural landscape of Gleishnig. <laughs> Sayonara!